So now we have our app open in the browser and we already know that if we make changes to this and save, that those changes are going to be automatically displayed in the browser. But let's take a deeper look at what's really going on over here. So there's a lot of things that are working together under the hood to make this happen. Now, of course, app.js has been highlighted as one of the first files to take a look at. So let's look at this file and then work our way backwards to figure out how all of this works. So taking a look at app.js, we actually have a React component. So React is made out of these things called components. And our parent level component for our app is actually going to be this app component over here. So what this function is actually doing is, I know it looks like a function called app. What it's actually doing is creating a, a stateless component in React. And then it's returning what looks like HTML except there is a slight difference here because this isn't actually HTML, it's something called JSX. And what JSX allows you to do is output JavaScript variables or uh, perform JavaScript logic in the code using these curly braces. So you're gonna see a lot of those quite often when working with React. The next difference you'll see is that we also have class name instead of class. So whenever you want to apply a class to uh, one of these elements, you have to use the class name attribute instead of class. Great. So that's what's going on over here. Uh, what's going on at the top here are JavaScript imports. So you're going to see this quite a lot when working with components is that you might want to import code from another file. And this is something that is new to JavaScript in ES6. So it's actually been around for quite some time and some of you may have already been using JavaScript imports in the past, but some of you might not know this. Um, so JavaScript imports, whenever you re, uh, import a file that doesn't have a relative file path, then JavaScript is automatically gonna assume that this must be a package. And so this must be located in the node modules folder. Now, of course, you're never going to edit any package files. So you just need to know that React is a package and it's located in the node modules folder over there. We're not going to worry about finding it. Then the next two imports over here actually have relative file paths. So dot slash means that this file logo.svg must be in the same directory as app.js because that's the file that's actually using it. Right, so if we take a look at app.js, that's in the source directory, and we've also got logo SVG in the source directory. So dot slash just means look in the same directory. Now, if you're not familiar with file paths, you might wanna make yourself familiar because you're also gonna be using things like dot dot slash to go back a folder and so on. Right, so uh, logo.svg is just importing this logo and app CSS is of course importing the app CSS into this file and we're using the classes from app CSS over here. And then we're also importing this logo so that we can use it as the source for this image. And that's actually what's got the React logo spinning over here. Now down at the bottom of the file, we're also making use of an export. And that's a very good sign to show you that this isn't the entry point into our app. This is actually just a component and this is being used by another file. So if we take a look at index.js, that is typically the main point of entry into any JavaScript app. So let's open that up. And you can see that over here, we're also making use of the React library and the React DOM. And we've also got some CSS files over here. But most importantly, we have imported app from app. So we've actually imported this app into the index file and we're making use of that over here. And what we're doing is we're actually binding the React, our React app to the uh, document element. And we're actually looking for an element with an ID of root. So where is this element located? Well, that's actually in this index.html file. So if we open that up, this is the uh, HTML file that is going to be shipped to the client whenever they visit our website. And so what our JavaScript is doing over here is it's looking for this div with an ID of root and it's binding our entire JavaScript application to this div. And then from there, 
we are conditionally rendering out all of our components. Uh, firstly, our app component and our app component can then render out the rest of our other components. So we can have components inside of components and that's what we are gonna be doing in the next few videos. So for now, I'm gonna end the video off here, but thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please leave a like, leave a comment, share this video with your friends, tell them this is the best React course you've ever seen and I'll see you guys in the next video.